This is not just one story, but a story that contains hundreds and hundreds of stories. The stories sit along a remote dirt road in the northeast kingdom town of Glover, Vermont, in a large, humble barn with a long and deep history. Built in 1863 by John Sherburn from profits he made selling wool during the Civil War, the barn is situated near a stream of water whose constant flow was integrated into the barn's systems to provide water for the animals and cooling for the storage of fresh cow's milk. John Sherburn's daughter, Daisy Dopp, wrote frequently about the adventures and lessons of farm life. She writes, To my mind, the biggest lesson a farm teaches is responsibility. My dad always taught me if you took on a job, it must be completed, whether it was work or caring for animals. In the 1970s, Elka and Peter Schumann, artists and residents at nearby Goddard College, acquired the barn. My parents, John and Marcia Scott, we're looking for a piece of land and we're looking around Vermont and came across this farm. We moved here in 1974. My parents bought this farm here, the old Dopp farm or the old Sherburn farm and, uh, and then very quickly decided that they couldn't take it on as a project, building and rebuilding project, and we, were, and we inherited it that way. And it just is the perfect place for us with this beautiful barn. In addition to their work at Goddard, Peter and Elka also ran the Bread and Puppet Theater, a group distinctive for its use of numerous large puppets in politically themed performances. Inspired by Sicilian marionettes, Peter and Elka's theater was a new combination of story and dance based on early traditions from around the world. The bread part of the show was born out of the desire to feed people in both body and mind. Peter bakes a traditional rye bread from his native Germany and passes it out at every show, feeding the puppeteers as well as the audience with bread and art. I think the, this particular bread, this hard chewing that you need to get through with the bread, is typical for our theater productions as well. They aren't uh, geared to entertain and to tickle. They're anti-tickle theater pieces. Bread and Puppet's largest shows took place on the farm. Every summer, crowds upwards of 30,000 people gathered for the Domestic Resurrection Circus. Today, there are many smaller performances each weekend on the farm, with interns and volunteers participating at all levels. The big dop barn was immediately useful to the Schumanns because it provided a home for their growing collection of puppets. Behind this humble facade are hundreds, maybe thousands, of characters. Everyone from the Founding Fathers to Ronald Reagan to Archbishop Oscar Romero, even Daisy Dopp has a spot here. In 1975, the Bread and Puppet Museum officially opened, enabling visitors to marvel at the unbelievably extensive scale and scope of these stories of the theater. For 30 years, the barn housed the puppets and their stories. Then, one summer day in 2005, a photographer uncovered some distressing information about the barn. 
The water, which had been so essential to the siting and early operations of the farm, had slowly eroded the foundation and overall structure of the building. It became clear that something major needed to be done, or the barn and all these works of art would be in danger. So the real um, root of the problem with that barn is that it's uh, built on a, on a hill that, um, that has a very heavy uh, soil with a lot of water moving uh, not very far under the surface. And um, over the years, the foundation, uh, it's, it's done a lot of damage to the foundation and the uh, piers in the center of the barn were sinking. Um, enough that it was putting real stress on the timbers up above. Peter and Elka contacted the Preservation Trust of Vermont to see if they could help. PTV provided a technical assistance grant to examine the problem and figure out a plan for addressing it. Well, the first step, uh, once we started, was to um, improve the drainage around the barn. The, the hill comes down on the north side of the barn, so we started there and um, dug a trench uh, about four feet out from the edge of the barn. Um, there were some severe wet spots there. We wanted, we wanted to drain that water away. So, so once the, the drainage work was uh, underway, then um, Paul Ide and his crew came in and started to um, support the barn with, with cribbing and and lift the parts of it that had sunk, um, bring it all back to a level. There was, there was one uh, point in the middle of the barn that had come down 12 or 13 inches. Other points were not quite that much. So they supported it in as many places as they need to, needed to and lifted it back up, straightened it out. Um, and then um, they could take out the posts that were under the barn, under the center of the barn, and dig new foundation holes for those posts and uh, get crushed stone in there, get some granite blocks in there, and set new posts. Once all, once all that work was done, then they could work upstairs in the top of the barn and um, pull the, where it had spread, they were able to pull it back together and make repairs to those, to the posts that had split. In partnership with the Freeman Foundation, the Preservation Trust helped the Bread and Puppet Theater by providing a $30,000 grant in May 2006. Other smaller grants were secured from the Vermont Community Foundation, the Vermont Division for Historic Preservation, and Ben and Jerry's Community Action Team. Supporters also responded well to Elka's letter writing campaign, helping them to reach their lofty goal of $108,000. Today, the barn is on dry and solid ground and the frame is fully repaired. Visitors continue to come to the unassuming Bread and Puppet Museum to be delighted, surprised, and overwhelmed by the impressive collection of faces, animals, and artwork. Peter still bakes bread each week and programs continue throughout the summer months. Now, since the barn got its big fixing with the help of the Preservation Trust Fund, the, the barn has become much bigger than it was before. The whole basement has become a room in which you can work and have wedding or memorial celebrations and dinner parties and what have you. It's a fantastically beautiful room augmented by all these post and beam structured supports that the barn needed but that were beautifully hand crafted by the builders when they restored the barn. We feel that of all the bread and puppet productions, the thing that's the easiest to think of for future years when I'm not around is the museum. Thanks to all of the bread and puppet supporters and the Preservation Trust of Vermont, the barn and the hundreds of stories it holds will stand strong for years to come.